at that moment. But it does look like right now, as people are still having that face to face interaction, confrontation with officers, and obviously dealing with the emotions yes. after someone has been shot and killed here, things are calmer than what we have seen when really you just saw a crowd moving, crowds as they, as they move and things are um, very excited. You know, it's, it's rough. It's a rough situation. It's chaotic, but at least we're seeing some peace at the moment. And that's the emotion that you see right there. A loved one is lost for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. A loved one is lost. Police also holding the line. There's a very active investigation that's happening, you know, just a few feet away. That is uh, what led up to this tense situation. And we do know a number of people on the scene of the protesters were taken away uh, in a San Antonio police paddy wagon, for lack of a better word, that showed up. Uh, at one point, police were trying to get through the streets and protesters just sat down. It does appear as if the situation is becoming much calmer out here, which is very good news. Um, and we do know that uh, the chief was on the scene at one point. Uh, we still see some yelling. That is why we have taken down the audio live at the scene because there were some obscenities that were being thrown uh, towards police officers. Uh, so we are we are right now hoping for a calmer situation. And you see police again are trying to disperse the crowd. Uh, uh, Tr trying to get EMS to the area, I understand as well, for somebody that may be injured. And uh, it looks like Lee is getting ready to give us an update perhaps out there. Um, again, this is a live picture. Lee, can you tell us what's going on out there? Are they trying to make room for an EMS unit to get in? Exactly. So because this is such a tense situation, there's a huge crowd of people here. They're asking people back up so we can get EMS here. Now, we spoke with the victim's mom, um, Arlene, and she tells me that she has breast cancer. She couldn't breathe earlier after being pepper sprayed, so they requested that EMS comes here. That was over 20 minutes ago, but again, trying to get down into the situation. There's a lot of people, a lot going on. They said she can make her way to Glebra to get down to that EMS unit. Because of everything happening, it's hard to get a, a unit down to her her here and um, but I know the, the family is very very upset they, they just keep telling us that he, uh, Kevin Johnson who they've identified the victim as um, he they say he was shot in the back police not confirming that chief McMahon is telling us that he has to review the body camera video before um, he can confirm anything like that but uh, family here is extremely upset sisters of, of Kevin Johnson um, Kevin's mother also very upset they tell us that Kevin had uh, mental health issues he was a bipolar schizophrenic according to the family but again chief McMahon is saying all of this stemmed from officers patrolling this area they saw Kevin they said they recognized him for having several uh, active felony warrants one assaulting a police officer the other felony possession of a firearm. That's why they approached. They said at some point Kevin pulled a gun and then that's when officers fired. There's three officers involved in that, but it's a very, very intense situation here. I understand we have some sound from Police Chief McManus. Let's go ahead and, and listen to that. The officers attempted to stop him. He ran and at some point, and this is what, I, what I'm not going to talk too specifically about because I have not seen the body cam, at some point he pulled a gun from his waistband. At what point the officer shot, I don't know because, again, I haven't seen the, 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 uh, the body cam. But that's what we have right now. hear him saying how preliminary all this information is. The process here, he has to go through um, and review all of that body camera video that they have from that scene. He says, he tells us that policy is with San Antonio Police Department, all three of those officers are going to be placed on administrative leave while this investigation is conducted. Now, family here just asking for answers, asking questions, hoping to be spoken to by police. I just heard uh, this officer telling the family EMS is walking up this way to to meet the mom here and provide her with some care that she needs. Um, th this has all been very, very tense. Uh, it's diffused a bit. That line of officers that was over in the street here, that's now broken up. Officers going back to their individual units. People still here very upset. Crowds still gathered, but it's not as an angry situation as it was earlier. Now it is more of a somber situation, crying for their loved one who was lost today. Uh, that That's the bottom line of this all. Um, someone who they love dearly was lost. Now, earlier we, we saw officers using pepper spray when things got very, very tense. People were pushing up on officers, trying to knock over that police unit over there. 
shaking it. There was water bottles thrown at officers here. We heard a pop from one of the units that was parked down the street and we saw one of the tires deflated. Um, and so that's when they started arresting people that pepper spray was utilized on, on several people. But officers uh, stood with their hands on their tasers. You can see mom now going over to EMS to get some care that she needs. Uh, her daughter and she telling us that she has breast cancer. Um, another one of the daughters saying that she is pregnant. So they're wanting some care at this point. But very intense. People here very, very upset. They lost someone that they cared about. They said the officers in this situation were the gang members, not the people involved. And, and we're just waiting to get more solid information from police, but that will come after they conclude Lee. their internal investigation. And finally, uh, look through all that body camera video. Hey, Lee, let, let me ask you a question that we were obviously watching it live play out uh, as you were. I, I saw officers engage some of the people that had gathered there to start to talk about what happened and maybe defuse the situation. I also thought I saw the mother talk to some of the protesters and try and defuse the situation. Am I, is that accurate? She was talking to her daughters there. Um, she was confronting her daughters, um, one of her daughters right there behind me, um, very upset. And this is another, this is Kevin's sister as well here. They're, they're very upset. And we have another sister. There's four of us. Right. And, and so so family here is very upset. You, you saw their, yes. their mom. My brother was run over by the cops. He was shot nine times. Couldn't defend himself. He was just running. Like, what are you going to do when you see a bunch of cops that, you know, are threatened and trained to kill black people? Of course you're going to freaking yeah. do that. This is something we go through every day. Hey, they stole my Lee. phone because I right. recorded the cops. Yes. I'm hey, so Lee. sorry. And no one wants to give it to me. We're, we're going to send things back to you all and, and let this situation, as people are trying to grieve here, let yeah. them have their space to grieve a bit. Absolutely, and that's what I was going to say. Off. Let's let's back yes. off the situation a little bit. I let these people grieve. It seems as if it's definitely calmed down. Uh, obviously, there are two sides to the story. We've heard from the police chief that this was a man who had multiple felonies, uh, felony warrants. One was fel felon in possession of a firearm, and one was we understand assault on a police officer. So uh, that's one part of it. The other part of it, obviously, a family grieving for a loved one that is lost. But uh, what I wanted to uh, kind of point out is we saw police engage with some of the people that were there grieving. We saw the mother engage with her daughters to try to pull them back. And uh, uh, thankfully, it seems like cooler heads have prevailed right now because I was watching that thinking the whole time, this is not San Antonio. Exactly. And as you're watching that play out, as we both were in the newsroom moments before we walked out here to the studio, you're just hoping that you're not going to see something take mm -hmm. a turn, uh, another deadly turn. Someone gets seriously yes. injured. And when you see that line of officers, uh, it's alarming because it, it, they thought there was a need for that. But it is good news that we have seen, like you said, some of those people who are understandably emotional try to calm the situation down themselves, having conversations with the officers, of course, tense, uh, but seeing that line of officers disperse and those officers be able to to talk with the people who are there because there's a lot of processing happening at this yeah. scene as officers are doing that during their investigation. Important to note that the police chief did say that there is body camera footage here, so that is key. And office, of, of course, everyone else dealing with those intense emotions because there is a life that has been lost here. The circumstances leading up to that, certainly something uh, that are going to be sorted out in, in the hours and the days ahead. But we know that right now, Lee has been on the, uh, the scene there, but we also have our Patty Santos. She is out there just a little bit south of where this happened, so a little south of the Woodlawn Lake Park area. Patty, certainly a calmer background in your live shot here, but talk about what you're witnessing and what you can see from this vantage point. Yeah, we just arrived and we really wanted to stay away from the middle of where all of this is happening. But I can tell you that there is a huge crowd that was coming in, crowds of people walking towards uh, the area that uh, police, where the police presence was. Just about five minutes ago when we arrived, this entire street here was filled with police officers. All of those started to leave and uh, as the crowd started to come in and that crowd, as you could see, is starting to, to go back. But I did get a chance to talk 
talked to a woman that lived in this house. She was quickly getting her kid into the car saying, let's go, let's go. I'm not going to stick around for this. A uh, very intense situation here, very scared people not knowing what could happen next. But at the same time, as you're seeing all this commotion happening here, we're right at uh, West End Park here. Uh, there's a playground. There were children here playing at the same time. So uh, a lot of emotions coming here. But as you can tell, the scene has calmed down now. And uh, luckily, we'll get some more details on to exactly what, what is going on. We did reach out to the mayor's office to see if he was keeping tabs on this. And he's saying he doesn't have much information right now, but we hope to get something more from him. We'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Patty. And a, a, a very valuable information there that people were just getting out of the situation. People were going in. Luckily, people seem to be dispersing from the situation right now. Again, this happened not all that long ago. It happened shortly before five o'clock where the shooting uh, came out, uh, came out at the intersection of North Hamilton Avenue and Calabria. This gives you a better idea of where we're talking about. It's roughly four blocks from Woodlawn Lake itself. Uh, and police were on the scene doing an active investigation into exactly what happened. Uh, family members showed up on the scene. Uh, they were obviously wondering what was happening. They were trying to get to their loved one uh, and, and could not. Uh, and that escalated from there. Uh, and a, a lot of what, what we're going through as a society right now mm -hmm. with the struggle between police and, you know, some of the uh, uh, people who feel like they're not being represented justly uh, is playing out on the streets of San Antonio. But like I said, I was very happy. San Antonio police were proactive in reaching out, talking to people, letting them vent. And it seemed as if a family member was also instrumental in tapping down and maybe t t turning the temperature down and to turning more to grieving than being angry about what happened. And to your point about looking at that and the not thinking this is San Antonio, we've seen it play out in so many other parts of the country where in a split second things can turn. They can turn deadly. They can turn extremely violent. And there's already been violence of some sort out there today. That's what got everyone to this point. So uh, happy that we did see that. And if you're just joining us, if you're just uh, trying to get information about what led up to this, we do know uh, that the location Steve mentioned, Hamilton and Calabria, earlier a man was shot and killed as officers tried to approach that man. They said he would not stop uh, to talk with them and pulled out a gun. That is according to the police chief. That was often common in these situations. We don't hear a lot from officers in the beginning as they're mm -hmm. trying to get their investigation underway. But we do hear from family members, from friends, from people in the neighborhood who want to talk about this. A question I know that we're going to try to answer is if any of those people who were out there talking to Lee, were they with this victim when this shooting happened? Right. They had some details that they shared with us. Um, one of the family members, I believe, told Lee that the victim suffers from some mental health issues. That is a key component in these conversations, like you mentioned, that have been happening over the last two years uh, about policing and community relations. So something that we are going to try to figure out as we go through this, as this investigation will definitely take more time. Yeah, and undoubtedly there are questions and there will be questions and that's what we'll follow over the next few hours, days, weeks and months. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more local news. An economic boost from one of San Antonio's biggest companies, HEB, just expanded its support center on the northeast side, and now the company is looking to fill hundreds of jobs. And our RJ Marquez got an exclusive look inside the refrigeration facility that stores thousands of items that make it to dinner tables every single night. This is definitely not a trip to your neighborhood HEB. This used to be our old grocery warehouse. We have since rebuilt this new facility here to expand and support our growing perishables business. This morning, we got a rare look inside this 34 degree warehouse that just tripled in size, going from 180,000 to 540,000 square feet. It houses product that is made here in manufacturing as well as produced from our suppliers. And we just dist distribute products across the entire state of Texas. It's also the largest refrigerated facility in the HEB network with 60 foot ceilings, dozens of aisles and 6,000 different items on the shelves. And this massive facility houses everything from candy, deli, meat, 
meat, bakery, milk and eggs. And what they need now is to hire hundreds of people to help get the job done to send out all these products across the entire state. There are 500 people who currently work at this warehouse, but with its recent growth comes more job opportunities. We're in the process right now of starting this facility up and adding volume to it. And uh, we'll be hiring over 200 employees or partners uh, over the next uh, three to four months. The company also looking to add another 100 people to its manufacturing business. And these jobs will be paying starting at $16 to $18 an hour. We've doubled just our supply chain in the last seven years. And uh, this is an exciting time to join our supply chain team. And even though these employees are working behind the scenes, they are critical to the HEB operation. Our partners are there every day, you know, making sure we work hard to serve Texans and uh, get groceries to our customers. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. It is 81 degrees out there right now. You know, I know there are a lot of people that are on spring break right now. And, you know, I know we need rain. I know all those things. But for those people, <laughs> Adam Kasky is a hero today because this is beautiful weather. Yeah, very, very spring break like, at least for around our neck of the woods here. And if you're visiting from out of town, you'll enjoy the rest of the week. That's for sure. I do want to get right to the radar. We have a few showers and storms that are popping up generally east and northeast of San Antonio. We're going to be on the tail end of this cold front that moves through later on this evening, and it could kickstart a few additional showers and storms. What you see right now, basically around Luling, east of Seguin, moving through parts of Gonzales, Gonzales County is just some heavy rainfall with a little bit of lightning and thunder associated with it. You can see this activity here right along Highway 90, the alternate route, the southern route there that moves into Belmont, St. James area. Some heavy rainfall, Luling getting the heavy rain as well. And just that northern corner of Gonzales County, Walder and Northward, we've had some areas of rain. And these are the most likely areas to get a few additional showers and thunderstorms through about midnight tonight. Part of the bigger system, of course, we're on the tail end of it as we often are. Most of the activity is far to the north of us, even north of Austin toward Waco, Tyler College Station. That's where we have some severe thunderstorms already in effect, even around Dallas, particularly north and east side of Dallas there. And that yellow box indicates the severe thunderstorm watch until 10 p.m does not include any part of the case at 12 viewing area. Here's our future cast. Notice at seven o'clock, a few other showers and storms could fire up a little closer to San Antonio, but by and large, most of this activity is going to be farther east of Highway 281. I mean, we'll take all the showers that we can get and any kind of rain out there, even through 10 o'clock, if you hit or miss showers. But I do want to point out there is the off chance that one or two could become strong to severe, particularly from about Hallettsville down toward Cuero and parts of eastern Gonzales County. All right, temperatures right now. Well, 81 in town, dew point of 50. 81 Holotus, Comfort 82, Bulverde 77, up to 86 in Pleasanton and Divine right now 85. Catula even warmer currently at 89 degrees. Tomorrow morning, upper 40s to near 50. By the afternoon, we do this all over again. Well into the 70s, some locations even into the 80s. Carrizo Springs 83, meanwhile Kerrville a high of 75. You get into Stone Oak about 78, Lavernia 79 tomorrow. A lot of sunshine, but breezy. You'll notice that north wind steady at 15 to 20 at times gusting around 30 to 35 miles per hour tomorrow. The rest of this week, mornings comfortably cool, 40s to near 50, afternoons in the 70s and 80s. Next chance of rain, only 20% next Monday. That looks like a spring break forecast. Thanks, Adam. All right, let's go to the AT&T Center. Greg Simmons joins us as we get ready for the Spurs and the Timberwolves, Greg. Yeah, and one of the young guns coming off a game where he missed a triple-double by one point. What was his downfall, his teammates, and he explains that. Also, when we come back, it is the Cardinals, the women's basketball team, headed to March Madness for the first time in school history. Coming up. everybody and welcome live to the AT&T Center where tonight our Spurs play host to the Minnesota Timberwolves tip off the final week of their seven game homestand so far the Spurs are two and two in this homestand that includes wins against the Lakers and the Utah Jazz to finally push pop over the top as the all-time winningest coach in NBA history with the 1,336 regular season victories but the Spurs are coming off a loss of the Pacers on Saturday while resting DeJounte Murray, Keldon Johnson and Jakob Pertl it gave opportunities to guys like Trey Jones to start missing his first triple double by just one point turns out he was just one for three from free throw line. It did not go unnoticed.
Out of everything, you had the easy, you had one job, and I was to make one more bucket, huh? <laughs> but um, it's gonna come. Yeah. You know, I, I see him having more triple doubles coming his way. Um, he's a he's a great point guard to play with. You know, I love playing with Trey. Um, he gets your rebounds. He's looking for you. You know, um, he's getting to the cup when needed. Um, he does so many things besides just scoring and passing to the to the team, especially for the second unit, which is. Uh, surely impactful. Got hit my free throws. <laughs> free throws, but yeah, my teammates were uh, getting me open and then um, this assist and everything, they're knocking down shots, uh, helping me look um, better on the stat sheet and whatnot, but just continue to try to uh, build each and every game, uh, continue to watch film with the coaches, um, trying to just um, improve my game um, every time I'm out there. And the Spurs are facing a tough opponent in the Minnesota Timberwolves tonight. They have won eight out of the last ten games. It includes wins over Golden State and Miami, the top-ranked team in the Eastern Conference, and right now sit in the seventh playoff position in the Western Conference. Here's a tip time tonight, 7.30, of all the highlights tonight on the night beat. Congratulations to the University of the Incarnate Word women's basketball team, who is headed to the NCAA tournament for the first time in school history. That's after they were able to beat Southeastern Louisiana 56-52 to in overtime to win the Southland Conference Championship. It's after they went into the tournament as a number five seed. After the win, the Cardinals returned to San Antonio for a Selection Sunday watch party at Broadway 50-50. It feels incredible, honestly. Like, nobody thought we would be in this position. I'm just glad we got the chance to play for a championship. You know, we got through a lot of emotions these last four days, so it feels good. We've never been on a stage like that. Even, like, making history, uh, winning the first game and going on playing four games in four days, like, just, just the momentum, the adrenaline, it was all there, and I, we loved it. We won it again. It's certainly a testament, you know, how tough-minded they are and how focused they were, so uh, just uh, obviously great for our program, for our university, athletic department as a whole to have this opportunity. Now the Cardinals will face Howard at 8 p.m. on Wednesday in Columbia, South Carolina. It's part of the first four play-in as the women's tournament switches to a 68-team field this season. Texas A&M fans are upset today after they feel their team was snubbed by the NCAA Selection Committee on Sunday. It's after they were able to win seven in a row and challenge Tennessee for the SEC title on Sunday, only to fall short 65-50. Still the Aggies 23-12, and but that was not good enough for the Selection Committee as they were one of first four out. Aggie Athletic Director Ross Bjork was not pleased. He tweeted out, it doesn't make sense. It's hard to figure out this a flawed selection process if we do not reward teams who deserve the opportunity. And, of course, we'll have all the Spurs highlights for you tonight on the Night Beat, live from the AT&T Center. Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. All right, Greg, thank you. We're going to go back to some late breaking news where an officer shot and killed a man on the city's west side. We've got a live update coming up. We are continuing to follow a tense breaking news situation on the city's west side. Officers shooting and killing a man near Woodlawn Lake Park at Hamilton and Calabra Road around 5 o'clock this afternoon. We saw a crowd respond. A crowd try to rock a police vehicle. The tires on that vehicle slashed. A line of officers responding to that to try to calm things down. We heard from Police Chief William McManus who said that basically this was a wanted felon wanted on multiple counts. The police officers were doing a normal patrol. They saw him. They tried to arrest him. He took off. The chief says a gun was pulled on his officers. It has been a very tense situation. Family members, a part of the protesters that were down there uh, protesting uh, someone being shot and killed by San Antonio police. Our Lee Waldman is still on the scene. Lee, it's my understanding right now that police have left the area. Yeah, the last officer just left a few minutes ago. People were trying to block the vehicles from leaving. Understandably, people are really upset, banging on officers, units, things like that. But you can see we're a little farther away from people right now. Those are family members across the street. We're giving them their space to grieve because they lost a loved one today. Um, the victim's father showed up here and was understandably upset. He tried to engage with officers. Officers tried to disengage, try to calm down the situation. But again, family is upset. They want answers. They want to know exactly what happened. And Chief McManus was very, very honest with us, saying it's going to take some time to figure out exactly what happened, what led up to the shooting. He said that a gun was pulled. A gun was also recovered. But it will take some time to 
put together the timeline of what led up to this shooting, but family telling us that their, their loved one, Kevin Johnson, was shot and killed by those officers. They're holding each other this evening, crying out for, for him and crying out his name, holding each other and, and just wishing this wasn't the situation that they were finding themselves in. That's why we're giving them more space. They need time to grieve in this situation, and, and we're going to give them all the space that they need. Um, again, all the officers have left at this point, but there still is a very large crowd of people, people, some upset, some angry, others just hurt and, and mourning the loss of someone that they truly cared about. Uh, family was telling us that Kevin Johnson, he, he had mental illness and he had bipolar schizophrenia. They said that played a role. They said that their family was, was born into an area that has some, some rough crime in it, but that they were not rough people. They said they're just hoping for some understanding and for some answers on what happened before Kevin was killed. And Lee, I'm glad you point out that we have now stepped away to let them uh, to let them grieve, to let them be together, because that is a point that should not be lost in all of this. As officers sort out what happened uh, from their perspective, the family goes through that as well. At the end of the day, someone's son, someone's brother uh, has been lost here. There is a life lost. So, uh, you know, you talked to a lot of family members earlier um, as they were coming up to you, sharing their perspective. Do we know if any of those people Anyone you have come across was with the victim when he was shot and killed. I asked his sister Jasmine that. Um, I said, was anyone with Kevin before he was shot? And she said, no, he was visiting a friend over here and was walking uh, to Calibra to get picked up by one of his sisters. So he was completely alone leading up to this shooting. Uh, she mentioned he might have been on a Facebook Live or something, but no, Kevin was alone before this shooting happened. And uh, and this all happened a few streets over. There's a culvert. It goes down toward a creek. That's where this shooting actually took place. And we'll have video um, of that area later on tonight in the night beat. A lot to sort out, Lee. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm glad you're safe. I'm glad you're sound. Uh, but it seemed like both sides really tried to defuse the situation. Uh, at least members from both sides tried to defuse the situation that ultimately led to things calming down, correct? Yes, uh, we saw several officers uh, coming and trying to speak calmly with people, telling them they understand that they're upset, which anyone would be in this kind of a situation. So we saw a lot of understanding on the part of officers and on the part of family members. Um, the, the mom specifically, Arlene Garcia, she was hugging her daughter, saying she knows that this is painful. She's trying to just get some answers, and that's all that they're asking for. But she was also active in trying to get people to move back from that line of officers, other people holding back Kevin's father when he was trying to rush toward the officers. People are trying to keep the peace here so we don't see things escalate any further. It's just they want justice, they want answers, they want to grieve, and that's what we're going to allow them to continue doing tonight. Our Lee Waldman live on the scene of an officer involved shooting on the city's west side about four blocks away from Woodlawn Lake. All right, we're going to continue to sort out a lot of details about what happened here. Um, look for further information on our website. This is a story that we're going to be on top of for several hours to come. But again, what we know is that officer shot and killed a man on the city's west side near Woodlawn Lake Park. And they say he had a gun and tried to pull out that gun. And that he was a wanted felon. He was a wanted felon uh, on charges, had warrants out for charges of a felon in possession with a firearm, as well as assault on a police officer. So a big question is if they were on routine patrol that saw this person out walking to wherever he may have been headed. Was this someone who was known to police already? Had they had any sort of prior interactions uh, with him? A lot of questions to still be answered about what led up to this and why someone was shot and killed today. And we do know that people were arrested that were actually on the scene, not in connection with the shooting, but in connection with the tense situation that played out after that shooting. We do know that uh, some tires were slashed on at least one uh, police cruiser. Uh, we actually uh, witnessed them trying to tip over another, you know, try to rock over another police cruiser. And we do know that several people uh, were taken away in a police van uh, as a result of what happened. And that's something that we watched as this has played out over the last now hour and a half. You saw a crowd gather. You saw things get really tense. People were, you know, moving very quickly. It was chaotic. But then you saw a line of officers form 
And in you know some ways, people reacted to that with yeah. even more tension, even mm -hmm. more emotion, throwing water bottles, throwing water at officers. But as that started to diffuse, like Lee mentioned, we saw those officers and the people out there expressing their frustration and their anger try to have those conversations with officers. But again, just moments before we talked to Lee, this time we could see someone hitting a police cruiser as it drove away from the mm -hmm. scene. Police officers have left uh, that location, but the emotion right now, it is not going anywhere. It is not. We'll continue to follow the situation, of course, have much more coming up on the night beat. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Inflation in those higher gas prices taking a bite out of spring break. It's made a dent in a lot of travel plans like heading to the beach, the mountains or some favorite getaway. Jesse Degogato says that for many, those have become staycations now, maybe short day trips in a city that's already known for being tourist friendly. Almost everywhere in Brackenridge Park, there were families on spring break enjoying the perfect weather and the fact they didn't spend a lot of money on gas getting here. I saved so much money than having to go spend, you know, $100 to take a trip somewhere just on the gas alone. You know, because we do drive a big vehicle and it, it does take quite a bit to gas up. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, let's stay close, close to home this spring break. Same for this mother who made Brackenridge Park part of their spring break. Normally we like to go to Port A or to the coast, um, but of course with the high gas prices, yeah. So she says Brackenridge Park will have to do. A family from Orlando here visiting their children's grandfather says actually San Antonio wasn't their first choice. Well, we considered Las Vegas, we considered New York, we considered um, Georgia before coming over here. They say it certainly helped that it was much cheaper to fly here. While this family from Houston drove to San Antonio on a day trip. For her sea world. And my, my parents want to walk around in the, on the river walk. It's very relaxing. The simple pleasures of Brackenridge Park are just some of what visitors say San Antonio has to offer. The iconic train ride and the San Antonio Zoo are both nearby, and even locals are getting to play tourist in their own backyard. This family had the Museum, SeaWorld, and Fiesta Texas on their list. I've been going to different places that I hadn't been to, so I've enjoyed it. Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. As Russia ramps up its attacks in the western part of Ukraine near Poland, a Ukrainian official says peace talks that took place today with Russian officials are now on pause until tomorrow. The war edging closer to NATO territory now. Russian missiles hit a military base near the town of Yaverev, just miles from the Polish border. The strike killing at least 35 people, wounding more than 100. Among those killed in the war, American journalist Brent Renault, who was on assignment for Time Studios. Russia is ramping up its attack near the capital of Kyiv. I'm staying in Kiev near a big residential building, which was hit this morning just three hours ago by direct uh, heavy artillery shell. For the first time since the war began, the U.S. holding high-level talks with China. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan in Rome today meeting with his Chinese counterpart. A senior U.S. official tells ABC News Russia had asked China for military support, a claim China dismisses. The UK government wants to encourage people to help Ukrainian refugees. As an incentive, anyone who opens their home to a refugee can receive more than $450 per month there. Sponsors must put up refugees for a minimum of six months and be vetted. The Homes for Ukraine initiative, it's open to everyone arriving in Britain from Ukraine. They will also get access to health care and employment. Pfizer plans to donate all its proceeds from a Russian subsidiary to support humanitarian causes in Ukraine. Pfizer made that announcement today, saying it's maintaining its supply of medication to Russia, but will be donating the profits from its Russian subsidiary to support Ukraine. Pfizer's statement called Russia's attack on Ukraine, quote, unprovoked and unjustified, end quote. Also, the company says it will stop new clinical trials in Russia and end some of its planned investments there. We'll be right back. Let's take a look at traffic out there right now with uh, Transkai camera here at I-35 and New Braunfels. And it looks like it's a good time to be on the highway. <laughs> 
<laughs> also a good time to be on spring break, which may be why there's a little less traffic. I, I, at the moment. Gas prices <laughs> may have yes. something to do gas may have something to do with too. all that. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm thinking. Once I look at that, Adam. Yeah, not driving old blue as much these days. That's for I sure. I bet you're not. Yeah. Blue. But it is running much better since I did the timing kit, the whole timing chain, the lifters, all 24 You've valves. Done, got it wow. Done. It's hard for me to keep track of what Old Blue has been through. I was really hoping for an Old Blue update. I know you were. That's why I had to bring it up. <laughs> Everybody wants the Old Blue update. I'm still trying to get my hands on some cassette tapes, but it's going to happen one of these days. I've got some. Do you? Yeah. Sweet. You probably want to hang on to them, though, right? Nah, you can have them. Okay, good. <laughs> a few storms this evening. Then we have some cool mornings, but comfortable afternoons. So a little below average in the mornings and then above average for the afternoons. Overall, good spring break weather if this is your week. All right, let's get right to the radar. I want to get straight to the point here with what we have developing outside. And that's some showers and now thunderstorms east of San Antonio. Odds are pretty slim for anything to develop around town. There is the off chance, but most of this is going to stay east. You see how it's just flaring up over the past hour, particularly from Stockdale toward Gonzales, up toward Walder as well, and then Luleen area just getting clipped by some of that heavy rain. This is some good soaking rain for a few fields and pastures out there. You look near Pandora, just east of Stockdale, very heavy rainfall moving into Nixon. Just west of Smiley, you could get clipped by that in Smiley, but for the most part, I think these are headed toward the northeast and uh, basically just paralleling Stock or Smiley there. You look into Gonzales County, western and northwestern Gonzales County, pretty good coverage right along I-10 in Harwood. And the, again, this is all moving from the south to the northeast. That's the direction. Not a whole lot of lightning associated with it, just mainly some heavy rainfall. Could be some pea sized hail, but as we go through the evening, there is the off chance for a rogue severe thunderstorm. And this is all part of a bigger system here. Big upper level system and a cold front. Most of the energy and the severe weather is to the north of us. I mean, we're talking College Station, Waco, Tyler, toward Dallas as well. Cold front's going to move through. Out ahead of that front, we're getting the storms. Cold front hits later on tonight. Behind it, don't expect a big temperature drop, but along it, a few of the thunderstorms. So here's our future cast. This is one rendition of 7 p.m. And this computer shows a few showers and storms maybe creeping into Bear County, Smithson Valley, Canyon Lake area, and then Seguin as well through about 9 p.m. I, I think this is a little aggressive, but nonetheless, it is one of the possibilities. And then through about midnight, 1 a.m., that's when we have the potential for the thunderstorms generally east of Highway 281. And here's the other thing. Most of the severe weather is going to stay to the north of us. I mean, we're talking East Texas, but there is that off chance, you know, near Gonzales, Hallettsville, Luling area, even down toward Cuero and Victoria, we could have a rogue severe thunderstorm. It's a scale of one to five. It's in that one category. So it's that off chance. We don't expect anything widespread in terms of severe weather, but one or two storms could become strong to severe. Otherwise, no chance of rain until this time next week. And right now it only stands at 20%. We could use some rain. Let's cross our fingers and say some prayers for it. 81 degrees right now with nothing but sunshine. Dew point of 50, a little breezy out there as well. There's a cold front moving through west and north Texas at the moment. Some of that cooler air is going to move in, but it's not going to have a big impact on our temperatures. I mean, near 90 now in Catula at 89, Del Rio 88. Meanwhile, in and around San Antonio, we're close to 80 degrees. And by tomorrow morning, we'll start the day in the upper 40s to near 50. By the afternoon, we shave off a few degrees compared to today. I mean, we're talking 84 Catula, 83 Del Rio, Canyon Lake about 77, 77 in Bernie, 80 Elmendorf, and Castorville 81 tomorrow. Wall-to-wall -wall sunshine too, but you will notice the wind. It's going to be breezy. A north wind steady at 15 to 20 with some gusts up to 30 miles per hour. And overall, the rest of this week, for the most part, mornings in the 40s to near 50, afternoons, 70s and 80s, and I mean mid 80s on Thursday, St. Patrick's Day. Look at that, 85 on Thursday. Mm -hmm. That's great weather for a green beverage of some sort. <laughs> Always is. What kind yeah. would that be? Mountain Dew or something. <laughs> oh, yes. Of course. Thinking. Of course. Yeah. Mellow Cucumber yellow. juice. Yeah. Cucumber juice. Cucumber. Get out That's of here. That's what Alexis, our producer, said. In case you missed it, come on. <laughs> Cucumber juice.
Good morning to you. It is Monday, March 14th, and just about everybody that wasn't on spring break last week is on break this week, including some of the big districts here in town. And a 15 year old shot dead before midnight during what the Bear County Sheriff's Office is describing as an apparent drug deal. And now they're trying to figure out who did it. This happened last night on Fossil Banks near Loop 1604 and Shanefeld Road. Investigators say that the victim was found at the scene. And despite life saving measures, he did not survive. We're talking about that 15 year old. They're now asking anyone with surveillance or any information at all to come forward. You can email BCSO tips at bear.org or call 210-335-6000. Fighters are trying to figure out what ignited a fire at an east side home last night and whatever it was, they say it destroyed the entire house. Now a family of five is having to find some new living arrangements. That fire started just before one o'clock in the morning on Hammond Avenue near Rigsby and I-10. Firefighters say the entire family escaped unharmed, but because of the way that the house is built with a wooden frame, they were not able to put out the flames quickly enough to save it. The next step, trying to figure out a cause. My foot there is a gravy. This is not just a school cafeteria. It's a safe haven for many hungry children in our community. We're noticing an influx of our kids coming in hungry. So sometimes they get hangry in the classrooms. Sometimes their lunch is all they're gonna get for the rest of the day. So it's really important because some of the parents can't feed their kids right now. Thanks for watching the news at six. We'll see you back here on the Night Beat at 10.